Right now, the client uses far too many plugins and Ember apps. In fact, during the client's bootstrap process, we load in 41 separate plugins and 16 apps. All right, before I play anything today, this was put out four hours ago, and I need to, I need to read this. I need to understand what's going on with the League of Legends client. As you can see, the classic Riot Games branding, they switched their logo, but they don't have fucking art for the... The thumbnail, this, the L is wrong. <laughs> the logo in their, in their post about the new client doesn't match the, the new logo that they released uh, for everything, so... You know, they're still working on that. TLDR, over the next six months or so, we'll ship a number of changes and improvements to the League of Legends client backend infrastructure. To track our progress, we'll be sharing specific targets for two main client performance metrics. Client bootstrap time, how long it takes for the client to boot up, and champ select lock-in time. The process of improving these metrics in the process of improving these metrics, we'll also be tackling things like bugs, crashes, etc. Put it simply, our goal is to fix the client. Riot, when are you going to fix the client? It's a question a lot of you have been asking. The client is not in great shape. It's got too many bugs, too much lag, especially in champion select. And, the, and a whole host of issues like memory leaks, crashes, freezes, and on and on. We've made commitments to do something about the client before, and yet, problems remain. Classic Riot Games. So we want to try something different. Instead of talking in vague terms about our plans, today we're sharing specific performance targets and clear details on the changes we intend to ship over the next six months. First, let's talk about some recent performance improvements we've made and dig into some hard numbers that will serve as guidelines as or as guide guide posts as we pursue future improvements. The client in numbers. Late last year, we added some tools to the client that allow us to track basic performance indicators like, for example, the amount of time it takes for the client to boot up and become fully functional, aka bootstrap. We would like Bootstrap to be to take under 15 seconds. Holy shit, that's so long. That's how it is for Electron apps. Look at this. This is VS Code. If I hover over it, this probably takes like five seconds to open. One, two, three, four, five. About five seconds. And that's an Electron app. League of Legends is also an Electron app, but now it's a two-stage Electron app that you need to sign into one Electron app, and then it opens up this client secondarily, uh, which I think also increases the startup time by quite a bit. 15 seconds is fucking crazy. That's like crazy crazy, but hey, I guess that's how the industry does it. I'll bet Dota 2 takes at least like 10 seconds to start because it launches the entire fucking game. Uh, under 15 seconds, even for players with relatively slow machines. However, we found that currently, Bootstrap can take up to three or even four times that long for some players. <laughs> I know! What if we just made two native apps? That would improve the startup time by a little bit. We moved from Adobe Air. They're like, oh, I don't really like programming in Flash. I'd rather program in JavaScript in an Electron app. They had the perfect opportunity to make two native apps. They support two platforms. It's not like they're doing iOS, Android, Windows, Linux, and Mac. They're doing Windows and Mac. <laughs> you just need two clients. Oh my god. And it's web-based, too. The Most of League of Legends is, like, web calls, so... I think that you could probably do it. Uh, even for players with relatively slow machines, however, blah blah blah. Uh, another major thing we've been tracking is champ select lock-in time. This is the amount of time that it takes the client to register that you've locked in your champ after you click the button. In the chart below, you'll see average response times for champ select lock-in during patch 922, orange line, and patch 10.2, blue line. Lock-in response time is calculated in milliseconds. 
So it's getting worse. <laughs> That's what you're saying. You're saying that it's getting worse. I'm looking here. 9.22 versus 10.2. And it's getting worse. Okay. Or is this percentile over champ select lock-in time? Higher percent are lower lock-in times. Okay. No, I read it wrong. It is getting better. This this chart is bad. I think that you don't want it like this. I think that you should present the data in a different way. The chart above shows how vastly different champ select response times can be for different players. Of course, client performance varies depending on how fast your machine is. If, for instance, it takes under 200 milliseconds for you to lock in, your machine is in the 10th percentile, and your response times are faster than 90% of all players. Likewise, if response times are over 800 milliseconds, you're in the 90th percentile, which means your client is running slower, uh, which means your client is running slower for you than 90% of all players. As you can see, lock-in times got a lot better for players during patch 10.2 compared to patch 9.22. The big reason for the improvement is that in patch 9.23, we updated the version of Chromium that the client runs on. It got us some big gains, but we think the client is still far too slow for many of you. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't fucking run the whole thing on Chromium. God, Electron apps are a cancer to this world. What a disaster. Uh, far too slow for many of you. It to see what we mean. Let's take a peek at a more detailed view of champ select lock and response speed over time for a few of those specific groups. Ninetieth percentile. It takes them eight hundred milliseconds to lock in. This is after the update. I'm guessing. They could have denoted that better. They could have put like a little subscript here. Because this drop probably means that that's what it was. Um, 70th percentile over 400 milliseconds. 50th percentile under, you know, about five, about 380 milliseconds or something. As you can see, the blue line represents the 50th percentile, or the median player. The big drop in response times for the median player here are good, but you can see that even as of early 2020, champ select response times for median players hover around 300 milliseconds. That's not horrible, but it's still a, a perceptible delay. The 70th percentile green line have experienced big improvements recently, but champ select response times for them are hovering around 450 milliseconds. That's nearly half a second of delay, which is frankly much slower than we'd want for anyone with a halfway decent machine. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I get it. I'm looking at the graph. What we're going to prioritize next. There are two specific long-term targets for client performance we're prioritizing. We want to lower bootstrap time to about 15 seconds, even for the 90th percentile player. That's between three and four times faster compared to where it is at right now. We want to get champ select lock in response times down to around 100 milliseconds for 90th percentile. Okay, so they're going to improve it by like 300%. <laughs> Good for them. So right now it's at what they said for the 90th percentile? Uh, 800. So they're going to speed it up by eight times, 800 times. Sure. That sounds like something they can do. That sounds like something that the Riot engineers are, are capable of doing. We know what you're thinking. What about the bugs? What about crashes and memory leaks? So for those of you that aren't like really competitive with League of Legends, you need to have this fucking button turned on. You need to have this turned on. Close client during games. If you don't have that turned on, your in-game FPS, like, even on a super good computer. My computer kicks fucking ass, man. 
I got the 16 gigs of RAM. I got the Intel i7 9700K. I've got the uh, GTX 2080. And I still have that turned on because it drops my FPS by like 10. <laughs> it's, it's unreasonable, man. This thing's a piece of shit. Uh... Why prioritize these things first? The reason is that in the process of addressing boot, uh, bootstrap time and select lock-in time, we're going to clean up and rework certain fundamental aspects of the client's architecture. We're going to write some nice, clean JavaScript. We believe that we'll be able to opportunistically address bugs, memory leaks, and crashes while pursuing these targets. Issues like the black screen bug and champ select and rune pages not saving properly are just examples of things that we intend to address as part of this process. But we want to be very transparent about the fact that this will take time. We currently have a rough six month plan that we believe will earn us meaningful progress towards these goals, but reaching our long term targets will likely take longer. These are targets and it's possible we may fall short. <laughs> Six months to improve the fucking lock-in time? It's gonna take you six months? Sure. We're sharing our targets with you because we know that in order to build back up trust in the client, we have to be more transparent than ever. So we're asking how exactly are we going to do it? How we're going to do it. So far, we've identified two major architectural problems that contribute to slow bootstrap times. The first is our plugin architecture, which allows us to break the code up for the client up into useful chunks. This architecture has gotten bloated, and we've added more functionality to the client uh, as we've added more functionality to the client. Secondly, uh, we're Misusing the JavaScript framework called Ember that drives our UI. Oh, interesting. Right now, the client uses far too many plugins and Ember apps. In fact, during the client's bootstrap process, we load in 41 separate plugins and 16 apps. Each of these take away from the 100 milliseconds to 800 milliseconds each to start up. That's not great. Our plan is to consolidate all these plugins and apps down into way fewer and theoretically more efficient plugins and apps. We're going to focus on the ones that start up during Bootstrap first because we believe that'll get us the biggest gains throughout the client. Phase one, Bootstrap. Today, it takes as long as 40 seconds for many of you to get through Bootstrap. If you're one of these players, you know that the experience can be extremely slow and janky. It also means that when your client crashes, restarting it is that much more painful. Lots of things throughout the client, like notifications, the friends list, the collections tab, are affected by the plugins and apps that start up during the bootstrap. So although our stated long-term goal is to get bootstrap time down to 15 seconds for the 90th percentile player, we want that... We think that the process... Uh, in the process, we'll also be addressing a bunch of bugs and inefficiencies that have an impact throughout the client. Yeah, I'm thinking that if we can get it down from 41 different plugins and 16 apps, I'm, I'm thinking that it might run a little better. Uh, after a few months of focusing on Bootstrap, we'll assess how close we are to our goals, and then probably near the end of spring, we'll move to focus specifically on Champ Select. Champ Select. Champ Select introduces many additional additional plugins and Ember apps. <laughs> to put it bluntly, almost everything you do in Champ Select creates new apps. Trading Champions generates two of them. So does changing your summoner spell. The longer you play League in a single session, the more these apps pile up on top of each other, resulting in an increasingly laggy experience. This problem is compounded by the fact that most of the actions you take during Champion Select rely on communications with our servers, adding latency to every interaction. The real root problem in Champ Select is the way that our backend system manage backend systems manage data. The current architecture of Champ Select allows us to pass a lot of powerful data through our systems. For example, if Riot decides to disable a champion in rank, that champion will become disabled almost immediately 
for all players, including those who are currently in champ select when the disabled is pushed live. Uh, that's a very powerful system, but it requires a lot of horsepower to make it all work. And the way the system is currently set up, that's a lot of unnecessary gates and bottlenecks in the process. So oftentimes, tons of data gets re-rendered when only one small input has been changed. This results in a ton... This results in tons of damage to your client experience. To fix this, we'll have to fundamentally change the way our champ select backend infrastructure works. We're going to rework how all data is passed through from server to client during champion select, which will take some time. We have other ambitious long-term goals that could make champ select even more efficient, like consolidating the whole client down to a single Ember app with no plugins at all. Oh boy, if only we had 4,000 engineers to work on this. Uh, but for the short term, we want to implement enough changes to make the client run as our target rate at our target rates, which we've shared above. It's unclear how close to good we'll be when we finish the six month process. But when we get to the end of it, we think we'll probably have made a ton of progress and discovered clear next steps. We found that if we just completely eliminated the need for Ember.js and plugins and instead wrote the client in native fucking code, it would be a lot faster. Ooh! Next steps, we're going to be checking in every couple of months with dev blogs sharing our process. Hey, I'll be looking for them. Which will include hard numbers on performance and any tweaks to the project's timeline. Yeah, we're thinking it's probably going to take about another six years. Wish us luck, and thanks for being uh, League players. We'll chat more soon. Honestly, like, in six months, even with, like, two people, you could rewrite this whole client. You could rewrite this whole client in two months. Right? What part of this, like, you already have the chat backend. Everything in the backend... If you just rewrote this as native code, it would be way faster. It would be way faster. Just take this out, turn this, this client here. Take out all the Ember JS, take out all the bullshit, and just make it a fucking native app. The reason why they did this, uh, this is called the League client update it's called the lcu uh league of legends developers okay why replace the client we built our client in 2008 on a front-end technology called adobe air which uses an rtmp session-based networking protocol to talk to our servers this platform served us well it offered a rich uh, multimedia runtime with animations and effects that just weren't possible with html at the time and why not well, i don't know why it had to be html dude additionally it was cross-platform and made building screens easy for a team that was light on artists and designers blah 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 html5 is standardized widely adopted platform yeah when i'm thinking league of legends i'm thinking html5 here we are a javascript uh step a javascript is the king of the world our initial idea was to do all the work in JavaScript. Since we were planning on building the UI using HTML and JavaScript, initially we felt that putting all of the business uh, and business and communications logic in JavaScript would simplify the architecture and keep it uniform. Uh, the impulse for this type of uniformity between UI and service lies at the heart of platforms like Node.js. As such, we developed a simple and minimal C++ library allowing JavaScript to invoke remote calls via RTMP and handle asynchronous responses. We kept RTMP because it worked well for our current scale and because we didn't want to change the communications protocol at the same time as changing the client. Why not? Based on some internal uh, based on some internal prototyping we decided to use ember js as our single page application framework and ember orbit 
as our data layer. Wow. So if we if we keep going through here, you'll you'll read uh where was it? What could possibly go wrong with something so straightforward? Well, quite a bit as it turned out. Our JavaScript code became extremely complex due to the fact that we were handling all the asynchronicity in the web tier. Further, player state was being kept in JavaScript also, meaning that we couldn't easily minimize down to a low memory footprint. So this architecture solved issue number one, which was the HTML thing, but did nothing for issue two and three. Uh, an internal developer satisfaction survey found that developing in this way was less productive than the air client. Oh my god! Man, let's go back to Adobe Air. That's the only way that we can do it. Write a fucking native program. You have millions of users. Write a fucking native app. It's a video game.